trouble at home. Yeah, I just got dumped in the form of a spectacularly written Dear John email. That's life at sea. Well, sprinkle her in the chili if you want. Hey, Fry, ready for set railing yet? He's working on it, sir. Oh, hey, that was some nice uh, ping pong action earlier. Yeah, you're next. How's the port turbine? Up and running, sir. And, uh, you bruised Ego? Uh, repairs are underway. <laughs> You'll get over her. And how many X's do you have, Captain? Oh, <laughs> too many to count. So I'm learning from the master. Yeah, as your captain, I try to lead by example. <laughs> you hear that? Yeah. number of alarming things today. Just try to remember this is only an exercise. As a contingency analyst, my job is to scare you and hopefully prepare you for the worst imaginable catastrophes. We have to acknowledge the very real possibility of a global pandemic involving a highly pathogenic SARS-like virus. The World Health Organization projects this. Uh, for the purposes of this study, we've selected St. Louis. Stage one, the long-term post-nuclear radiation effects. Stage three, preventing widespread panic. All right, any questions? Great, it's so quiet. I'm dead, let us in! Jeff, we know you're in there! You said if we moved to Wednesdays, they wouldn't find us. Catch the premiere of Still Standing on its new night. Stupid word of mouth. Then this unemployed dad has found the secret to happiness. <laughs> Freeloading. The beer, the food. They're not even trying to get a job. Put a baseball hat on him, he's you. Yes, dear. Are you sit around all day making whoopee? Sit, stand. <laughs> Lean against the wall. Premieres after Still Standing, CBS Wednesday.
Dr. Caffrey, my name's J.T. Balak. Deputy I'm National Security Advisor. Yes, I know. I take it you and Toto have been briefed? On the ride over. You wrote this three years ago. Do you need a few minutes to refresh yourself before we throw you to the wolves? No, I'm good to go. Okay, no dogs allowed. Jim, watch the mutton. From what I've heard, the Oval Office seems to think you're some kind of genius. Oh, I don't know about that, but I have advised them on a few occasions. Your modesty is refreshing. Now drop it. We need you to take control. I'll do my best. How many people were brought in on this? How many know? Defense, Homeland Security, Langley, NASA. We kept it limited per your protocols. What about the President? Not yet. Good luck. National Security Advisor, Andrea Hatton. So nice to see you again, Molly. Likewise. Ladies and gentlemen, under Executive Order 221-C, I'm reminding everyone that what we're about to discuss has been classified top secret. No foreign dissemination. This image was captured by our Cheyenne Mountain facility. You're looking at the heat bloom of an unidentified object entering Earth's orbit from deep space at 2200 hours. At approximately 2212, the object made a number of course corrections. Course corrections? That's right, Admiral. We believe it's under extraterrestrial control. We lost contact with the object at these coordinates. The Coast Guard has informed us that a naval vessel in the vicinity has gone silent. At this point, I'd like to turn the briefing over to Dr. Caffrey, a senior analyst at the Blackwood Think Tank. Dr. Caffrey wrote the protocols we'll be implementing tonight. Dr. Caffrey? Thank you. Some of you may not know what a contingency analyst does. I deal in worst case scenarios, the unthinkable, and this definitely qualifies. Now, Threshold was designed as a rapid response measure to a first contact scenario. Stage one of the plan calls for an immediate quarantine of the landing site or possibly crash site. After the object is effectively secured by a special ops force, the next step calls for the insertion of a red team. Now, their priorities are threefold. Confirm the presence of extraterrestrial life, intelligent or otherwise. Attempt to communicate with it and finally to determine its intent whether it poses any possible threat. And if it does? You'll find that on page 45 under the chapter heading What to Do If We're Screwed. So, which of the red team candidates were able to get? We got your microbiologist, Nigel Fenway. Perfect. He's an MD with a background in pathology. Former 60s radical, stubborn as hell. If we are dealing with alien life, he'll help us figure out how it eats, sleeps, and breathes. Well, next up, Lucas Pegg, astronautical engineer, Jet Propulsion Laboratories, Pasadena. Great. He helped design the Jupiter probe. We are dealing with the UFO. He'll pop the hood. Tell us how it works. Also one of the all-time high Jeopardy winners. Good to know. Number three on the hit parade, Arthur Ramsey. Expert in linguistics and applied mathematics. If R.E.T. needs to phone home, he'll translate the call. The guy is brilliant. Yeah, well, he's also got quite a gambling booze or stripper problem. We all have our vices. Really? What are yours, Dr. Caffrey? I only reveal those on a need-to-know basis, Mr. Cavanaugh. Well, here's your red team. Not exactly Charlie's Angels, are they? Let me get this straight. We could be witness to the greatest moment in human history, and you people want to keep it a secret? Damn right. What if some kind of technology could be reverse-engineered from what we encounter? Do we want it falling into the hands of other countries? God forbid the government would give the rest of the world the benefit of the doubt. Here's a thought. What if they're hostile? I mean, even if they're benign, their presence alone could incite worldwide panic. Look, gentlemen, we don't know what we're dealing with. And until we do, whatever we discover stays in this room. Finders keepers. Hey, while we're on the subject of aliens, I don't appreciate being abducted. How long is this little field trip going to last? Indefinitely. So what, I'm a prisoner? That's not gonna fly. Hey, can I talk to you in private for a minute? Door number one or door number two? Uh, I, I don't know, what are, you, what are you talking about? Door number one, you bring along a slide rule and a smile and you do what you're asked. Door number two, you disappear into an eight by 10 cell for the rest of your life playing solitaire courtesy of the federal government. You can't do that, that's illegal. 
So is Severi National Security, my friend. We're in dark waters here, okay? So I'm gonna ask you again. Door number one or two. We'll be choppering you out to the freighter with a Navy SEAL escort. Securing the vessel will be your first priority. However, we've had a slight complication. The NSA has informed us that the North Koreans also detected the object. They've dispatched a Kilo-class submarine to investigate. How much time do we have out there? Five, six hours at best. What is this, War of the Worlds? You ladies good to go? Probably not, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Have we considered how this might look? I mean, what if they've come bearing gifts? Believe me, Lucas, I hope they have. Ten minutes ago, you were worried about global panic. I like to worry about things from all angles. 